Hello and welcome to Quilt Tutorials. In this video we are going to show you how to make a beauty and cosmetics shop using the Biagiotti WordPress theme. At the moment we are looking at the theme's landing page. It displays the highlights of what's in store. To begin with, here's the homepage showcase. This theme has six options in terms of homepage layouts, so there are different options depending on your needs and stylistic preferences. Next we have the inner pages. Those include contact, our team, and so on. Underneath them we can see some of the plugins that this theme is compatible with or simply includes. The WP Bakery page builder is actually bundled with the theme. Biagiotti is also compatible with the Elementor page builder and all the demo content has been created both for WP Bakery and Elementor. So when importing the demo content you can choose which page builder you'd like to use. For the purposes of this video, we'll be using WP Bakery. Biagiotti supports e-commerce, so here we can see some of the predefined shop elements that are included in the demo content. We'll take a closer look at them later in the video. And here is the blog feature. If you're interested in blogging, there are a couple of blog list layouts and post layout options. Moreover, you can showcase your portfolio using the predefined portfolio layouts that are part of the demo content. And that's it! Let's get back to the top. I'm going to go through the main home with you. This one. And throughout this video I'll be showing you how to customize its various elements. The main home looks like this. There are quite a few different things here. We'll be going through these sections in detail later in the video, but first let's import the theme's demo content. What you see here is the WordPress dashboard. This is the command center if you will, and we will be setting things up from here. The theme-specific settings can be accessed via the Biagiotti dashboard. Let's open it up so we can import the demo content. Before you start your import, make sure you previously installed and activated all the recommended plugins. Those include WooCommerce, which is essential for shop making, so if you want to follow along with that part, please make sure to install this plugin now. Once you've done that, navigate to Biagiotti dashboard, import. And... okay, Biagiotti is there. Under Select Import option, pick All in the drop-down menu. Confirm your choice by clicking Import and OK in the pop-up prompt. The import may take some time. It depends on things like the amount of demo content, your internet connection and so on. You need to wait until you see Import is completed at the bottom. Now we can go to make sure that everything has imported properly. We're going to do that by giving the site a look over in the front end. Go to the Home icon in the left-hand side top bar and click on Visit Site to open the home page. And it's loading. OK, here is our home page now. The demo import seems to have gone well. We can see the images and placeholder text on our page. I'm just going to see if everything is here as it should be. Ah, something's off here. Let's see what that is. Here at the bottom we should have the Instagram feed. This isn't showing up on our site because we need to connect our Instagram account and you will connect yours, otherwise it won't be there. Also, the newsletter subscription form didn't show properly. We'll fix both later. Now, let me close this. This is where we left off, our homepage. And if you want to keep this as your homepage, you need to set that in the back under Settings, Reading. OK. Now, here at the top, under your homepage displays, make sure the static page is marked so that your homepage always displays the same static content and not your latest blog posts. Then, in this drop down, you need to pick the page that will serve as your home. I want to keep the main home page, so I won't change anything here. That's all we need here for now. And since we've set our home page, we can start exploring it and customizing its elements. So let's see how our page looks from the back. Now, all our pages in WordPress are located under Pages, All Pages. And all the pages that are included in the themes demo are here as well. There's our main home. You can see it's marked by this grey text saying Front Page. That's thanks to the options we just set under Reading. We can click on the page now to open it. And here is our home from the back. You can turn this off. Now, this page is built using the WP Bakery Page Builder plugin. As I mentioned before, it's included with the theme, so you'll have all this on your end too. So let's get back to the front and start from the top of our page. Here at the very top, we have this black band. This is the top bar. 
you can make adjustments to it and the header by going to Biagiotti options and then header. OK, here in the top bar options, we can see it's set to yes. Since it's enabled, this opens several customization options for it. We can set it to be in grid or change its background color. You can pick it manually or type in the hex code. You can make it transparent or set a border or change the border's color. But the top bar height is interesting. The default 33 pixel set is this height here. And you can change it by typing in a different number. And we can give it a padding if you need more space here or here. Just add a number in pixels or percentages in this field. Now, the actual top bar elements, these, are arranged in three different columns. And that was added not in the options here, but in Appearance Widgets. This is a view of all our available widgets and widget areas. The widget areas are on the right. I'll minimize the sidebar. We can see now that there are different widget areas shown here. And all of these on the left are the widgets we can add. We can add the ones we want by dragging and dropping them to one of the areas on the right. It's a simple drag and drop, just open the area you need first. Now let's find what we came here for. The header top bar. All three columns are here. Left, center and right column. When we open the left, we can see there's a text widget here. Among the widgets, you can find it here at the bottom. You can use the drag motion to add it to a side area, or you can click on the menu to get this drop down with the available areas. So, if we wanted to add another text widget to our top bar left, we just need to click here on the area name and go to Add Widget. OK, going back. Our text widget contains an email. That's this. You can edit it here or in the text editing mode. OK, don't be scared off by the HTML markup. You can select just the text or email address and change only that. I'm going to put in an imaginary email, but you should set your own here. And save. Now we can go to the page to check. Refresh. There's the email I set. It's styled like the old one because I didn't touch the HTML tags. Now, let's see the middle column. The top bar center column also has a text widget, and it's used to add this text, which again, you can change using the text editing mode. As before, to keep the same style, just avoid touching any tags and select only the text for changing. OK, the third column. That's the top bar right column, and it has the Biagiotti login widget. And when we open it, we can see that there are no options available for change here. This comes predefined as part of the theme and is used to display the admin user's profile and a few navigation links. So if your role is admin, then you only need to set your email in users, all users. By default, you're going to be set as admin, but you still need to set some more information about yourself. So those include first name, last name, nickname, display name publicly, that's what we saw in the header top bar. Then email and profile picture. You can set yours using Gravatar. It's free to use and you only need to make an account if you don't already have one. After that, you just need to go to update profile at the bottom. There. And that's it. So once you've customized the user, the name and profile picture you've set will appear here. And of course, you'll be able to use these navigation links normally and log out when you need to. And that's it for the top bar. Now we can take a look at our header and the widgets we have there. But first, your general header settings will be under Biagiotti options and header. Exactly the same as it was for the top bar. Now on the front, we can see that our header type is actually a divided header. That means we have our oops logo in the center and it's bracketed by menu items on the left and on the right. At the far left, we have a wishlist widget, and on the far right, we have a couple of others which we'll look at later. So, um, if you want to keep this, the divided type, as your header throughout your site on all the pages, you should set that here in general options. The options you need are these under header type. Although, as we've seen, our page already has a divided header, this was set in the options for the specific page. 
So now I'm going to use these global options to set the divided header type. This will ensure we have a divided header on every page, not just our home. I'll save the changes. I'm going to refresh the page. It's a good habit to form, even though we shouldn't see any changes since the header type is the same. Yes, there it is. Basically, anything you set here in the general theme options will apply to your entire site unless you set a page-specific exception. So my divided header will be everywhere and we can see what else we can change for it. The first thing we need to do in header options is choose the header type we will be customizing. This of course will be the header type you intend to use on your site. All the options in this drop-down are actually shown above, here, with these box-like graphics. The default is set by the theme. Centered is on the left and the rest are shown from left to right. Divided is the currently active one. The minimal, standard and vertical are the remaining three. Let me show you how a different one would look when we switch types. We can try the minimal. Select and save the changes. Then refresh the page and it hasn't changed. Why? That's because there was an exception set for the home page. I have the back of my page already open, so I'll just quickly change this. You need to scroll down until you reach the header settings for that page. Here they are. We can see that under header type here, we have a divided one set. This is because the theme's default header, the one I just changed, wasn't divided. If we select default now in this menu, the header we will get is the one I'm trying out, the minimal. That's because I set minimal as the header type for all pages in global theme options. Let's update the page. Okay. Now the front too. And there it is. This is the minimal header type. It's characterized by this neat layout with a logo on the left and a hamburger icon that opens the main menu. Okay. Since this is a matter of preference, I'd like to restore the divided header. And I'm going to do that in the general options. There. Save. Let's refresh the page. And it's back. Now for the customization options. We can change the header behavior. That means, let me show you. Here, the current header behavior has it showing up on scroll up and down as a sticky header. So if... Ah, I need to set the type first. If we were going to start customizing these header options now, we would actually be changing the style for the minimal header. But that's not what we need. We are going to be using the divided header, so we'll change this to divided. And the behavior can be sticky on scroll up down. Save changes. We can refresh the page, but nothing visible should have changed. And there it is. Moving on. The top bar we looked at already, but the menu area styles new. Here we have the option to set our menu in grid. Currently it's off because of this no. Grids for desktop screens are usually between 1100 and 1300 pixels. And our header, the divided one, with menu items here and here, as well as widgets at the edges, is full width. If we set it in a grid, we'd limit its display to a set pixel width that would be about here. This is approximately the edge where the grid would end. It doesn't make sense to use it with this header type. Now we can also change the background color. Set the level of transparency, add a shadow or a border, and adjust the header height. When this is empty, it means the theme default is used. We can also set a side padding. Skewed section. Enabling this would make our header skew to the side and give it an asymmetrical look. Next, we have the sticky header settings. The scroll amount for sticky lets us choose after how long the header appears once we've started scrolling. If you're not happy with the default, just set the value in pixels here. After that, we have similar options to the ones before. We can set the sticky header in a grid or change its background color. Here it's... dark. Actually black. Then we can set the transparency or add the border color. And see the height? It's custom set. You can change it by changing the value here. I don't think I need the side padding, but this can be fun to play with. You can change the font family, there is a great selection included in the theme. Then you can change the style, height, transform, etc. Next, the fixed header options. Basically, they are the same ones we have for the sticky, 
but depending on the header behavior you set at the start, then you need to do your customization in the appropriate section. So if you set your header behavior to fixed and not sticky, then this is where you'd be adjusting its options. And here we have the main menu settings. We can change its color and transparency. Change this to set it in a grid. Then decide whether the drop-down menu will be in a grid or not. And we can choose its appearance. We can use the animate height to... Let me show you on the page itself. That's this. When a user hovers over a menu item, they will get this slide down effect for the main drop down options. It's nice and I'll keep it. Now, the first level menu. These settings are for the visible portion of the main menu. You can adjust the styles here without affecting the look of the drop down menu options. You can change the fonts, colors, spacing, margins, and much more here. Then, all subsequent levels, meaning second tier and so on, can be customized separately. We've reached the end of the header options. So to start customizing my page, I want to change the theme logo with my own. The logo is changed using the general Biagiotti options. We have a logo option in the menu, so let's open it up. You can see that there are some images uploaded here already. Those came with the demo content, so what we need to do now is replace them with our own. When you're uploading a logo, keep in mind that the image should be twice the size of the display dimensions. What do I mean by this? If, on your site page, your logo will be displayed as 100 by 50 pixels, then the logo image you need to upload should be 200 by 100 pixels, double of what your visitors will see. You can upload different logos for each of the available header variations. Let's start by replacing the default logo. Remove. And let me upload my new image for the logo. Just a sec. There. Open. And here it is. Select image. Now my default logo is here. And I'm going to use the same image for the logo image dark as well. There it is. This way I'll make sure the same logo appears throughout my site, regardless of the header variation being displayed. However, I'm also going to replace the logo image light. You should use this if you have a dark background and need a light logo image so it remains visible. Let me upload one now. Okay, open and select image. Now for sticky. I'm going to set the light logo image here as well because the sticky header is dark. And on mobile I'll put the dark logo image, the same one I used for the default logo. When you're done, go to save changes. And then we can check the front end. Refresh the page to see if the new logo is there. Yes, good. I'll just scroll down to see if it's showing in the sticky header too. Yep, there it is. So, that's it for the logo. I can close this. And actually, close this too. What I want to do next is replace these menu items here. The ones we have now are part of the demo content. So let's see how to customize the main menu. You need to go to Appearance, Menus. Okay, this is where we can edit any of our menus, not just the main one. And since we're using a divided header type, our menu will actually be split into two. Divided left and divided right. And each of them is created separately. Now, the first thing to check is what menu is open for editing. For me, that's divided left. Divided left navigation consists of the menu items to the left of the logo. These here. So, I'm going to scroll down. There are quite a few items here. So the easiest thing for me to do is just delete this menu. Before you do, make sure that the appropriate menu is checked so you don't accidentally delete something you want to keep. Okay, now just go to delete. Yes, I'm sure. And now I'm going to choose create a new menu. And the first thing I need to do is name it. I'll put it as divided left. And click here. Then select the location where it will be displayed. Divided left navigation to replace the old menu I deleted. When you've done that, you can start adding items here on the left. Go to view all so you can see all the pages you have. And you just tick the ones you want and add to your menu. And there it is. I want to change how it's shown. It's label. Make it just home. Then I'm gonna add about us. And um, contact us. Save menu. 
Now let's check if it's OK on the front. Refresh the page. OK, my new menu items are here. Now we can move on to customizing the right side. So select Divided Right, there. The steps we'll take are the same. Delete the old menu, OK. Then go to Create a new menu. I'll call it Divided Right so it matches with the left. Create menu. Now make sure you tick the Divided Right here. And then you can start adding items to your menu. I'm going to search for the ones I want. It's going to be quicker than scrolling through all the available pages and looking. So I'm going to start with a shop. Add to menu. Then I'm going to add a blog and make it blog standard. Add to menu. Just rename the label. Now it's just blog in the menu. And the final thing I want to add is the portfolio page. Let's find it. Hmm. There. And once you've added it, you can save this menu. Then we can go and check out our page. Refresh and there they are. Both my left hand side and my right hand side menu items are what I wanted them to be. So I'm actually pretty far along in customizing my header. The next thing I need to sort out are the widgets, like the wish list here. You can customize them, add new ones, remove them and so on by going to widgets here under appearance. This is a view of all our available widgets and widget areas. All of these on the right are widget areas. And we can add the widgets we want by dragging and dropping them from the left to one of the areas on the right. Now I need to find the header widget area 1 and 2. And when you open the first one, there are three widgets here. So actually area 1 is for these three widgets on the right the search, the shopping cart, and the hamburger that opens the side area. As for customization options, for the search opener we can change the icon color or give it a color that appears on hover. We can adjust the pixel values for the margin and we can choose a search icon text. You can enable or disable this option. By default it's... let me show you. When you open the search it unfolds into this band. And this search text here is what you change using the option in the back. The next widget here is the drop down cart. It's pre styled by the theme and you don't have to make any changes here. Finally, the side area opener. That's this burger with a hover effect. We can customize it by setting a new color, a hover color, changing the margins, or giving it a title. The side area itself has its own widget area, here. When we open it, we can see that it has a few elements already. A logo, some text, social icons, and a few links. In the back, that looks like this. A text widget. Open the text tab to see the contents. Don't worry, this looks scarier than it is. We're looking at the logo image inserted using HTML elements. We're going to replace the image and I'll show you how. No worries, you don't need to know any HTML. Go to Media. Then add new. We're going to select a new logo image. I have one prepared. OK. When you click on it to open, you'll have this copy link field on the right. I'll copy it and go back to my widget. Now just paste over the old link. Make sure to select only the link text and not any of the surrounding markup. Save. And then we can refresh the page to see how it looks. My new logo should be there. Let's see. There it is. Now, underneath the image, we have a custom HTML widget. This was used to add the text under the image. That's this text here. You can change the text by selecting it and typing over it. Just avoid the HTML markup if you want to keep the appearance from the demo. Next, we have the side area bottom. This is where our social icons are. The widget we're using allows us to place them as a group. Each icon came from the Ion icon pack, but you can select one of the other packs bundled with the theme. The first of our icons is for Facebook. There's a long list of platforms to choose from. You need to set the link to your profile here. Choose whether the link will open in the same or a new window. Then we have a Twitter icon and all the same options we saw for the Facebook icon. Same goes for Instagram, Pinterest and any other social icons you choose to add. 
The widget has room for up to six different icons. Then you can change the color for all of them. Set a hover color or adjust the margins. On the front they look like this. And if you want to add a couple more, there's room. But you should try not to clutter up your side area. And under the social icons we have another custom HTML widget. It's used to make these links here. The collections has an H4 tag, meaning it serves as a heading or a title for the list of links. Links themselves are below. The bits like organic collection represent visible text on the page, and you can change them by selecting and typing over them. To set your link you need to put it in place of the hashtag. Once you replace all the links and text, you can just save the changes and you're done. Of course, whenever you make and save any changes in the back, it's good practice to head over to the front, refresh the page and see how it looks. Ok, nothing got jumbled from my poking about in the settings. Now that we've seen that, we have one remaining bit of the header to take a look at, and that's the wishlist widget. Since it stands apart, it's set in a different header area. If you recall, the widgets on the right were in header widget area 1, so our wishlist will be in header widget area 2. The wishlist is added using another custom HTML widget. All of these elements below are for stylizing the text and the SVG heart icon. Like earlier, you can simply select the link and replace it with one leading to your own wishlist page. All of these elements below are for stylizing the text. So you can skip them entirely if you're not comfortable editing HTML. That way you keep this lovely appearance for the widget. Ok, that's it for our header. We've covered all its areas, so we can move on to the rest of the page. I'm going to show you how you can create, remove and customize page content. The topmost element here is a slider. It's built using the Slider Revolution plugin. We're going to customize it by going to the plugin settings and working from there. Here we are. Alternatively, on the main home page, you can see the element within the slider. It's inserted into the row. In fact, you can think of all the page elements as arranged in imaginary rows. So, if you want to customize the slider, you can also do that from here. Click the pencil to edit. And unlike the plugin settings where we had several sliders, from here we can go straight to the specific slider we need. So, we can start by replacing this image with our own. You replace it by going to Slide Options and then, if it's not already, select the background option. Then we'll just open the media library and upload a new image. I prepared one. Just a moment. Ok. And now insert and there. Save so we can check the front. And let's refresh the page to see. Ok, there's my image. But actually I want to have this image front and center at all times. So I'm going to remove the other slides in the slider to achieve that. You can add or remove slides by opening the slides drop down. We can see here that this slider has three slides. There's a tiny preview for each. If you want to edit any of them, just click on it to select and it will open like our current one. However, if you want to delete them like I do, there's a very easy way to do so. Just click on the little bin icon. Confirm that you're sure and that's it. I'll also delete the third one. Yes, ok. Now save. Refresh and there's my slide number 1. We can see that the navigation arrows on the side are gone since there is nowhere to navigate to. Now, since my image is different, this content laid over it has become hard to distinguish. So the next thing I want to do is adjust the styling. The first thing I'm going to change is this text here which is actually a PNG image with a transparent background. So what I'm going to do there is replace the image. Let's go to add layer, then image and WordPress library. From there we'll upload files. Select files. There it is. Ok. Now just go to insert. And my new image has appeared. Now from the size and position menu in layer options, I'm going to change the layer align. The current option, layer area, 
means that if you set a grid for your page earlier, the users will be able to see this layer, i.e. image, within your chosen grid. So if you set a grid for 1800 pixels, then users will see this image within the bounds of those 1800 pixels. However, if we change the layer area to scene, then the slide and its layers will be displayed across the full width of the screen. Then below this, we have the responsive behavior section. The new layer automatically got all these options turned on. I'm going to turn them all off now. You want all of these off because the theme has its own settings for responsiveness and those may clash with the plugin settings. Also, turning them off will make manipulating layers easier. Now I'll just drag this image over the old one. I'm doing this because I want to keep the positioning as it was. When you're happy with the placement, go to save. Then we can see how the slide looks on the front. Refresh. There's my new image. And it overlaps with the old one perfectly. However, now I want to add an animation to my image, so I'll go ahead and do that. We need to open the animation option. And then from there we can pick an animation effect from the dropdown. Something from slide transitions, for example. And maybe short slide from right to match with the other slide content. And here is where you can set the animation start. If it's zero, the animation will start as soon as the page loads. This makes it less conspicuous, so I'm going to delay the start by setting 300 milliseconds here. That way the slide has time to load before my animation shows up. And I'll change the duration to 500 milliseconds. OK, save. And let's refresh the front. Looks good. The rest of this text and the button are very hard to see. So let me change their color to black to help them stand out. Click on the layer to select it. Still, in layer options, go to style. The text we selected is visible in the window here. And this is where you change the text itself. And under style, we have the text color option. By clicking on it, you'll open this color picker. You can select the color manually or by clicking on one of these below. Since I want plain black, it's easiest to choose from here. When you're done, click on the check mark button and then save. Now we can check the front. There, looking good. Then I can move on to the next layer, this one. Click on it to select. And then, same as before, pick the color and then confirm your selection. Save. And on to the front to refresh. OK. Now all we have left is the button. It's added using a layer for text and pasting in the button shortcode. I suggest if you decide to add buttons in other sliders that you use the button shortcode from the theme. This will help you ensure the style of the button matches all the others on the theme. And it will save you from building a button from scratch in Slider Revolution. What I'm going to do here is click on Wrong Menu, double click on the layer, and the menu with the contents options will appear. Here we have the text editing window where we can see the shortcode. What I'll do here is just switch the black and white by exchanging the hex color codes. The hex code for black is six zeros and for white it's six Fs. So now I'm just going to replace the zeros with the Fs and vice versa. Then hover color. You'll want to make sure all the colors are mirrored so your button still ends up looking good. The next, background color. And scroll down, border color. Finally, the hover border color. Save. Now, when we check the front, all the button colors should be in verse. Refresh. And OK, there it is. Looks good, I'm happy. And that's it for my first page section. We can close this now. And let's see what else we have on the home page. We'll be working with the WP Bakery page builder and its elements. Anything you want to edit, you use this little pencil to open. These are the row settings. And within this row, we have another row embedded. Now before I open this, I want to show you. That's this on the front. So we have a section title element. Let's see its options. 
lots of text fields. The first bit of text, this line here, is actually a tagline, and that is where you change it. Then the title, that's here, and finally the subtitle, it's this bottommost line. Any changes you want to make, you should make in these fields here. And after, you can make stylistic changes in the tabs above. The first is tagline style. We can change the HTML tag here, switch the position, replace the color, and make font size and height adjustments. And we have similar options for the title text. So tag, color, and so on. Beyond that, we have the subtitle tab and the additional style tab. This is where you'd make adjustments if you had, say, a button in this section. But as you can see, we don't have one now. So these don't apply for us right now. And under the section title element, we have a product list carousel. In the back, that's added using a product list element of the carousel type. Now, to make any kind of list, product or portfolio or anything, you need to make singles first. You can make product singles by going to products. This is an option you get when you install and activate WooCommerce, one of the theme's required plugins. Let's start by opening all products. And here we can see all the singles that came with the theme demo. You can edit any of the existing ones, but I'll show you how to make one from scratch. Go to Add New. This is what a blank product single looks like. Doesn't seem like much, but that's what we're here to change. So first, let's give our new single a name. Say, Lipstick. OK. And as soon as you've named it, WordPress gives it a permalink so you can open this page and see the view from the front. But before I open it, I want to set some basic things here on the right. I need to set a product category for my single. All these came with the theme demo, and you can use them, but I want to show you how to make your own. Here under Categories, in the Name field, just type in what you want your category to be. And then I'll copy it. I want to use the same name for the slug. There. Then just add new category. And topping the list, there it is, my new category. Now I can get back to my single. Actually, let me first publish it. This serves to update my page so that the new category will appear in the list. OK. I don't want it to be uncategorized. I want to find makeup. OK. Then I can set some tags for my product. If you're not sure if you have the tags you want, you can see all the ones you have by opening the Tags option. OK. Now in this list we have a total of 8 items. I see there's already a beauty tag, so I'll use it instead of making a new one. However, you can make new tags the same way you'd make a new category. It's very straightforward. But back to my single. Now that I know I have an anti-aging tag, I'll add that. There and also beauty. Then just go ahead to add. The next thing we should do is add a featured product image here. This will be the main product image. Upload files. Let me find the one I had in mind. Open. Now just set product image. And of course, it's always a good idea to have multiple product images on your page, so I'm going to add a few here using the gallery. I'll upload four new images showing different angles. When they've uploaded, just add to gallery. And then update the page. Now we can open the permalink and see what the page looks like with all that's been done so far. OK, there's my product single. Ah, I named it lipstick and then used images of something in a bottle. But I don't want to waste your time by retracing my steps, so let's carry on. I'm going to add a product description in this field here. It's just placeholder text to give you a sense of how things will look like. Then scroll down to set a product short description. This is text that will show up below the title. Let me just add it and I will show you where on the page it will be. Update. OK. Let's refresh the page. And there. Away with you. This here is my short description. And this is the regular description, the one I added first. 
OK, let's go back to editing our product page. We're going to add product data now. Starting with general stuff like price. I'm just going to use a random number. There. You can also set the sale price. Let me show you what that does on the front. Refresh. There. The price is listed right underneath the product title and the original price is crossed out with the price we set under sale price shown as applicable. Oh, we also have this feature to add more of the product to cart. Once users are set on the quantity, the purchase button is right there to move them along. The next thing we need to add is the inventory information, namely the SKU number. It stands for Stock Keep Unit, and it's generally used to track products. Each product needs a unique SKU number, so you can start listing your products starting with one, and increase the numbers as you go on. OK. Then Stock Status. You can pick between in stock, out of stock, on back order. That depends on the actual product status. I'll leave mine as in stock. OK, then shipping. This is where you'd add information relevant to transport, shipping, packaging, and so on. Of course, that's only in case you offer shipping and your products are not digital or intangible. So here you'd add weight, for example. 0.5. Then dimensions, length, width, height. The measurements are in centimeters by default. I'll just set something random now. And shipping class. You can set this once you know what kind of products your online shop will carry, so I'll skip it for now. FYI, if you want to change any of the default settings, you need to use the WooCommerce specific options available from here in the menu. There's a lot of them, so I'm not going to go through them now. It would take us way too much time. After that, we have the link products. As you can see, there are several types of products for you to choose from. This option is there to help with cross-selling and upselling. For our basic run-through, we don't need this. Then attributes. You can add some using the option here. Basically, it's like making tags. Just name it and you're done. Attributes are used to set stuff like product color or size. If you have a product in multiple colors, you make a color attribute and then add it to the product data. You will then be able to use attributes to create product variables if you want. Products that come in different colors and sizes for your customers to choose from. And the advanced settings. The interesting thing here is the menu order. If you want to affect how the products are displayed, when you make a product list and want, say, this one to be shown first, you just set it as number one. Then, when choosing how your product list will be displayed, you select it to be ordered by menu order. And that's it. These here, under Get More Options, are some additional options offered by the WooCommerce plugin. You won't need any of this for the initial setup. However, if you are interested in any of them, you can click here to learn more. Moving on. Here at the bottom, we have a few relevant options. If we have a non-standard product list, a list that's not gallery, then we can choose the size of the individual product display. Basically, if you choose to have a masonry product list, then for each single, you can set whether the list will show it as small or large. And if you decide to make it large, then you can have it as large in height or large in width or large in terms of both. This is one way you can make a product stand out on your list display. Show title area. The default setting has it turned on and actually, let me show you what I mean. Here at the top is where our title area should show. It's blank right now because it's connected to my website's shop page. So we need to sort out the title area on the default shop page by adding an image, and then it will be reflected here. But before I get ahead of myself, I'm going to update the page so that all the changes I made are saved. And then we can see how far we've gotten. When we refresh the page, all the product data should be there, like the SKU number, the category we made, and the tags we added. Then below that, our description is here, and we have an additional information tab. So you can see that our product dimensions are there, and if we had added any shipping information, it would show up here as well. Also, there's room for reviews when users start leaving them. Then, 
since at the bottom all we have is a related product section which is currently generated automatically from the other products that came with the demo, I can get back to the title area. And now I can show you how to sort out this blank band here. Every e-commerce website in WordPress needs to have a default shop page. This is where all the products on offer will be listed. Biagiotti includes demo shop pages in its content. You can see them under all pages. Here is everything I imported with the demo content. Let's find the page with shop in its name. Here's one. Let's open it up. OK. Now, this might not look much like the page for the single did. That's because I need to enable editing in WP Bakery. Click on the button. And there. Looking closer to what we're used to, right? Now we can scroll down to the Mikado title section. There it is. The first thing we can see is that the option to show title area is enabled. And all these settings underneath are options you can use to edit the title area. You can set it in grid, adjust the height, change the height for mobile devices, change background color using this easy color picker. That would be something you'd use if you didn't have an image but wanted something in your title area. Then you could pick a background color. And now we come to the background image. To have all these settings applied to your shop singles, you need to set this page as your default page. By that I mean, whichever page you decide to use for your shop, you need to mark it as default in WooCommerce settings. That's done by going to WooCommerce and then going to Settings. Open the Products tab. And in this Shop Page field, we have a drop-down where you need to find and select the page that will be your default shop page. Then just Save Changes. And this should make the title area background image show up. But let's check to make sure. Refresh. And there it is. Now that I've gotten that working, I'm going to replace the image here with one of my own. First, let me switch the WP Bakery editor back on. There we are. And scrolling down to find the image. Ah, remove. And I'm going to upload a new one. Just a moment. There. Select image. Now back up to update the page. And then we can open it to view. OK, here's my shop page. The new image is there in the title area. And all the products are listed here. We have single product pages for all of these. Now, on the right, we have the sidebar and its various elements. We will go through these in detail shortly, but let's finish up with our product single first. There's one more thing I wanted to mention. Let me refresh the page so that the correct image is displayed. OK, that's the one. I actually wanted to draw your attention to this sale marker. It's going to appear on any product listing that has a filled-in sales price, which ours does. And that's all we need for the single. Now we can get to work on customizing our default shop page. To start customizing the sidebar, go to Appearance, Widgets. And the sidebar widget area is already open, but don't let that fool you. The one we need is Shop sidebar area. Let's open it to see what widgets it contains. There's quite a few of them. The first one is Biagiotti Separator widget. This widget serves an important function. It lets you adjust the spacing between the title area and the sidebar. By adding a 35 pixel top margin here, you can give yourself some space between this filter widget and the title area. And the custom value allows you to line up the widget in the sidebar to the products on the page. So the separator widget is not visible for users, but it contributes to the overall look of the page. Next up, we have the Filter Products by Price widget. It doesn't come with any options because there's really nothing to customize. It's a simple filter, so you only need to insert it and change the title if you want. Following that, we have another separator widget to help with spacing. After that, we have the Product Categories widget. This widget lets you display product categories in the sidebar. They are ordered alphabetically by name. 
and we have this show hierarchy option ticked. It will let you display the hierarchy of your product singles. Then another separator followed by a products widget. This works as a sort of product highlight if you want to draw your visitor's attention to a really valuable offer, for example. Currently, there's these two. In terms of options, we can change the title. That would be this. Then we can choose how many products will be shown. Keep in mind that the sidebar has limited real estate, so you don't want to swamp it. Then, and this is important, we can set which products will be shown, whether it will be all, just featured, or the on-sale ones. Next, we can choose the order by criterion. Currently, it's set to date. You can't see it noted down on the front, but the products are ordered by date. You can change this in the drop-down, of course. And you can choose whether the order will be ascending or descending. These are the foremost options you'll need when getting started. The next thing we have are the tags. The tag cloud widget doesn't come with any options because there is really nothing to customize. It just displays all the tags you have. So when a user clicks on one of the tags here, all the products that have that tag will be shown. Then, skipping past another separator, we have the search widget. It allows you to insert a straightforward search bar that, thanks to the sidebar, will be accessible to users on every shop or product page. They just need to start typing a term and click on the icon here to run the search. After that, we have the Instagram widget. When you open it, you can see that there's nothing there. That's because it's not connected yet. We're going to fix that now by heading over to Biagiotti Options and finding the settings for social networks. OK, now scroll down, we need to locate the options for Instagram. There, connect with Instagram. In order for this to work, you need to be logged in to the Instagram account you want to connect. If the connection is successful, you'll see a notice in the Instagram options. Here it is. This green band saying that you've successfully connected. Then save changes. And we can check how everything looks now. Let me refresh. OK, there it is, our Instagram account. And that's it for Instagram. The final widget we have is the contact form. It's styled to match the theme's looks. And this one is for the newsletter, as we can see from the title. And it's, let me close this, it's here. This is our contact form on the front. Interested users can just add their emails in this field and in doing so get themselves on the newsletter recipients list. Essentially, this is a newsletter subscription form. And that's all we have in terms of sidebar widgets. Back on our homepage, having prepared a product single, we can take a look at our product list settings. We have several tabs with options for this element. The first thing we can pick is the product info position. There are two options and the one that's set now, the info below image, looks like this on the front. You can switch that to info on hover, then we can select the number of items displayed. There's five now and this allows for the carousel to rotate. With fewer items, there'd be no need for the carousel to move. Now, before I make any new changes, let me save this and show you how the product info on hover looks. And now we can head to the front to see the results. Refresh the page. Now, when we hover over a product, all the information appears over the image. Since the list is going to be moving about thanks to the carousel, hovering over items might prove inconvenient for users, so I'm switching this back. There. The next option is space between items. You can pick anything from tiny to huge. Right now, the 15 pixel provided by the normal is a sort of middle ground. On the front, that's this space here between products. So if you're not happy with it, you can change it to something larger or smaller. Or you can eliminate the space entirely by selecting No. I'll leave it as normal. Then we have the Order By dropdown. The theme default has it set to date, and that's alright with me. Actually, almost forgot, the Menu Order. This is the option I mentioned earlier when I was making the single. 
If you assign unique menu order numbers to your product singles, you can choose this option now and they will be displayed in the order you choose. Then I didn't set anything there, so I'll leave this as date. Then you can pick whether the display will be ascending or descending. Then, thanks to the category option under sorting taxonomy, my products will be shown by their category instead of, say, their tag. Then after picking the taxonomy, you need to choose a specific value that belongs to it. So since I have category, then I need a value like lip gloss or better yet, makeup. If you recall, I made a makeup category earlier and now I'll fast forward while I make singles for it. That way my list will have something to display. Now I'm done making my singles with the appropriate category value. So I can put makeup under taxonomy values. There is no autocomplete here, so make sure you don't make a spelling mistake. Then save changes. Update the page. Let's refresh the front as well. Okay, this is it. These are my new product singles and we can see that each one belongs to the makeup category. I'm happy with that. So let's go back to the list settings and see what other options we have. After general, the next tab is slider settings. The first option, number of visible items, currently it's 4, but you can increase or decrease that by picking one of the other options in this dropdown. Then enable slider loop being set to yes means that the products in the carousel will keep constantly looping. And enabling the autoplay will ensure that carousel items will start to move on their own as soon as the page loads, without users having to navigate them. Slide duration is 5000 milliseconds by default, as that's enough time for the carousel to turn, but you can set any other numerical value if you prefer. You can also change the animation duration from the default 600 milliseconds to a number you prefer. Then slider navigation arrows. It's enabled because it's good practice to have navigation on sliders. Helps with user interaction, so I suggest you keep it. And we can change the slider navigation skin to light, but I wouldn't recommend it as it will be harder to spot given our light page background. Slider navigation position. This means we can have the arrows or what have you either inside or outside the slider. Given the layout of my slider and the number of visible items it has, I have room to keep my navigation on the outside. I think it makes the whole section look quite neat. Then the arrow position. It doesn't come with many options because it's stylized to match the theme, so I wouldn't change this lest I spoil the overall appearance. In the next tab, product info, we get to pick and choose what text will appear under the images. Most of these are marked as yes, and that's something I want. That's because this makes my product title visible, and the category, price, and rating as well. Except for the excerpt. You can add text here to provide more information about the product. But I think that would be too much text in my slider. And besides, anyone interested can open the single product page and get this information. Now, the final tab, Product Info Style, has options that will let us stylize the text from earlier. So all this can be made to look different using the settings here. We can do that by changing the title tag, the title text transform, button skin. If you have one, I suggest you leave this as default since turning it light will make it blend into the light background. Then we have the shader background color. That's this color you get when you hover over an image in the slider. You can switch it to match your images or contrast them or anything you like. Then product info text alignment lets us determine the position of the text in relation to the image. By default it's centered. You can change that to be left or right if you like. Next we can give the text a top margin. That would be here, if you're not happy with the current spacing. And the same applies to the bottom margin. Save. And that's it for the product list. We can move on to the next section. Which is, let's see... This here is a portfolio list. Let's see what options we have for it. Here it is. The portfolio list has this row all to itself. When we open the settings, we can pick the template, gallery or masonry. Right now it's set to gallery as we can see. We can pick the number of columns that will be displayed. We have four of them at the moment. Then you can set a space between items if you want, since we don't have any here and the number of portfolio singles per page is 8. 
If you want to list out your entire portfolio, type in minus 1 here to do that. The image proportions are staying original, but you can switch that to any of these in the drop-down. Our original proportions happen to be square, so if you change this to square it would look the same, but you can change it to any of these others below. We can give the images a shadow. And this is important, we can see that we have a one category portfolio list with beauty being used as the category. You can change this of course, but let's take a look at what singles we have with this category first. We could reuse the demo ones. So now we're going to open the portfolio options. They are here in Biagiotti portfolio. And again, Biagiotti portfolio. Now these are all our singles and I'm looking for the beauty category. So we can see that there is a lot of singles with beauty in the portfolio. Now the first single shown on my list is lip liner. Let's check out the page from the front. Okay, here is our lip liner portfolio single. We have some images and this text at the bottom. That's the one we saw in the first text field in the back. The title of the single will appear at the very top. Here it is. And here on the right, we have a list of other portfolio categories that visitors can use to look at different products. It's something useful to have so you can get users to check them out too. Now, the next thing I want to draw your attention to is this featured image option. Actually, the image that appears in the portfolio list. This one here. But this is a demo image, so I'll change it. Just remove the old one. And then set. Of course, I'll be replacing all the other images as well, just like your list will have images of your own products. But this run through will show you how to replace or add your own featured images. Right? Set featured image. Here it is. Let's also check the front. Update. And on the home page, refresh. There it is, the new lip liner image. Now, some of the other options we have for our portfolio single that I'd like to touch on are the portfolio images here. Only three images are currently uploaded, and those are the three images we can see here on the single. So if you want to remove them and upload new ones, you'd do that here. Another option I'd like to mention is this portfolio sidebar items. This is where you can add custom items to your portfolio sidebar. On the front, that's this section here. Of course, you can create more sidebar items if you want to by using the Add New Item button. The date and category are automatically generated, but you can use these options to set the client. The date shows when the single was made, and the category will automatically display all the categories and child categories you selected for your single. So while those two are displayed by default, we can use the options here to customize the client. You can replace the item text so it's not Mikado themes, and add a link for the item text. Decide where you want to direct your visitors and set the URL. We can immediately see there are a few elements in our elements holder item, but they're familiar and what I want to show you here is the settings we have for the elements holder item itself. The next set of options are Mikado portfolio settings. The current single is set to the portfolio images type. If we change that to default, which is portfolio small images, we'd get, let me show you, update, refresh. And we can see that the image is now smaller, and the description and sidebar are located on its right. As we scroll down the images, the text slides down to follow us and stay in view. It acts a bit like a sticky header. See? It follows us as we go back up, too. Since we're already here, let's see what a portfolio single with full width images would look like. Let me update the page. Update. And refresh the page. It really resembles the previous one, except the images are no longer in a grid, but full width. The description and sidebar are still on the right. There are several types of portfolio singles. You're welcome to try them out or check out the live theme demo to see what they'd be like. 
I want to push on with the theme customization, so just let me switch the type back. Portfolio images. And up to update. Now I can close this and get back to my portfolio list. But to do that, first I want to replace the featured images for all the other beauty category singles. That way my portfolio list will display those images instead of the demo ones. Since we've seen how to do that using the lip liner single, I'll just skip ahead and save you some time. When you've replaced all the featured images, or simply prepared all your new portfolio singles, we can head over to the home page and refresh it to see how the new portfolio list looks like now. And yes, all these images are new and are displaying without issues. And now we can get back to our home page setup. We've reached the show only projects with listed IDs option in our portfolio list settings. This option will help you display your singles by their IDs, not their category. My list is based on a specific category, so I won't need this. And the same applies to the one tag option. Then the remaining two options, order by date, can stay and order descending is okay too. So let's move on to the content layout tab. We have the gallery overlay set under item style. Basically that's on the front, this overlay with the title and categories shown on hover. The enable title is set to yes. That way users can see this, the singles title. Then you can change the title tag. Pick one from H1 to H6. Oh, the enable category. This lets users see which categories the single belongs to. It's set to yes, so we can see them here. And speaking of information you might want to share with your visitors on the portfolio list, right now it's pretty minimal. And here in the options under Enable Excerpt, you can set a bit of the description to show when users hover over an item. Personally, I appreciate the minimalist approach here, so I'll leave it set to no. With the following tab, Additional Features, the option you'll probably need most often from here is the pagination type. We'd use it if our portfolio list had slides or something. However, with our list type, there's no need for it. That's mostly all you'll need to get started. So I think we can move on to the next page section. That section being the carousel with client items. Each client logo we saw on the front is one client's item here in the back. And all these client's items are added to the row using an elements holder. There is a number of things you can change here, but it's not our focus now, so let's keep going. The elements holder contains an elements holder item. It has its own set of settings, but one I wanted to show you is the paddings option. You can use it to set pixel values that will adjust the spacing for this carousel. The values are added clockwise from the top, currently set to have 153 pixel padding. And the values go top, right, bottom, left. The padding is used here to customize the spacing at the top and bottom. If you want to adjust it, just change the values. And remember, they apply to the entire carousel. Now we've come to the client's carousel within the elements holder item. You can think of these as little nesting dolls if it helps. Let's see what settings we have here. The first is number of visible items. Currently at 8, but you can reduce that number if you like. There are 8 items visible here now. Enable slider loop is set to yes. This means that your client items will be on a slider that will loop back on itself. And by enabling slider autoplay, you will let the slider start moving as soon as the page loads. The following two options will use default values if left blank, so moving on. Slider navigation and pagination. Since the slider is looping automatically, I don't need them. And finally, item hover is set to switch images. That's actually when I hover over an image. Even if it looks like a color or animation effect, this is actually a different image showing through. Both images are the same, except for the color differences. That's the end of the client's carousel settings. And now we've reached the individual client's items. Let's take a look at what settings we have. At the top we have the images I mentioned earlier. The first one is shown in the carousel, and then the second one which is shown on hover. If you like, you can change the image size. Then you set a link that will be available via a click on the image. 
and set how the link will open, same window or new one. And the other client's items have the exact same options in their settings. So let's move on to the next section. This is the testimonial slider. Immediately we can see that it's nestled in another element. That's done to get this image situated in the background. You can access the row settings by going here and opening them using the little pencil. Then in design options we have the background settings and this image there. I'll replace it. Just a moment. Let me find my replacement image. OK. And set. Then save changes. And update the page. Now on to the front so we can refresh. There's my new image behind the testimonials. Now this text on the right is looking a bit cut off. So let's fix that. Over in the back we have the testimonials element, but also this, an inner row. Among these options, under Mikado settings we have a field for background text. The interesting thing here is the bottom offset. This is what results in the unique text positioning and this custom value in percentages will let it adapt to different screen sizes. Now since my text is coming across as a bit cut off, I'm going to reduce the offset to lift it up a bit. Let's say minus 45% and save changes. Update. And let's see how it looks on the front. Refresh. Yes, this is much better. Now, as far as the testimonials are concerned, the testimonial slider works a bit like a portfolio list. You have to make the items first. In this case, individual testimonials. That's done via Biagiotti testimonials here. This is a view of all our testimonials. We can see that they have categories too. Those are set here in testimonials categories. Since we only have one, we don't have to worry about picking the right categories. But if you make new ones, make sure not to get them muddled up when inserting. Let's open one of these now. You need to give your testimonial a name. This won't be shown anywhere, but it will help you keep organized as you go on. Next, the tagline. That's actually... nope, that's actually this cursive text at the top. And we can see that it's the same on every testimonial. You can change that up if you like, different taglines won't affect the settings, just the looks. Then the title, testimonials, it has a text transform for uppercase, so you don't have to worry when typing it in. And finally, the text, i.e. quote or blurb from POTS clients. Then the author, the person who said the thing. You can also add an author position, meaning their job title if it's relevant. And when you're done editing the testimonial singles or making brand new ones, you can return to the homepage backend and sort out the testimonial slider. In the settings for it, we have the type option that lets us switch this to carousel. I'm happy with the current layout, so this stays. Then skin. We have the default and light. Since my page colors are overall pale, I'll stick with the default. Number of testimonials that will be shown. If you made more, you can up the number here. And category. On my end, I have just one. But if you made more and want to show them all, then you can remove this and keep the field empty to achieve that. Then in slider settings, we have the slider loop enabled. Same goes for autoplay. You can change the slide duration and animation duration. We have the slider navigation and pagination enabled. It's practical when there's text to read. And that's it. I just want to check that removing the category hasn't done anything to my slider. It shouldn't have since I only have the three testimonials, so there was nothing to get jumbled up. Yep, it's still good. Then after the testimonials we have a row with three icon with text elements. Those are these three. The icon part is this number, it's actually an image. In the settings we have, actually first, every one of these has been added in a different column. We can divide our backend rows into columns if need be. So one through one is a standard row and it's not divided because it has an inner row. Now this inner row has custom columns set. We have three columns added to it and each of those three has its own icon with text element. 
In its settings, we can pick the type that will let us reposition the icon in relation to the text. Right now, we have the icon left from text. Here it is, this number. You can use an icon pack if you don't have an icon of your own. You have a wide range of options with this theme. However, we have a custom icon in here. It's added as an image here, the format used is PNG. And at the bottom, it's where we'd add a title, text and link to go with our icon. In icon settings, we have the options that you'd use if you selected an icon from one of the packs. Then you can set things like the icon size, either by choosing an option from the drop-down or setting a custom icon size in pixels. Same applies to the icon shape and color and hover color. All these things are something you can change if you use an icon from the pack. Then under text settings, we have some pretty typical options. Those are things like title tag, title color. We can set a margin and we have the same possibilities for the text as we did for the title. Okay, save. And we can move on to the following section of our home page. That's this. We have a mix of elements here. That's accomplished by using an elements holder. So we can call this an elements holder section. This outermost element is the elements holder. When we open its settings, we can see that there are two columns here. Those are, looking from the front, these two, one and two. The two columns each house an elements holder item. Even though it seems empty, when we open the first one, we find this image, which I'm going to replace so I have a different background. Upload files, and let me see. Okay. And I can go to set image. Note that the padding is zero from all sides. I don't need to move or offset the image in any direction. Update. And let's refresh the front. There, I have a new image for my elements holder item that represents the left column. And now we can look at the settings for the right side. To start with, we can immediately see that there are a few elements within our second elements holder item. Before we get into that, the settings we have for the elements holder item itself. There's a background image I'm going to replace. Let me upload a new image. Just a sec. Okay, set image. Now, we have some paddings here. The 204 pixels is for this top space here. Then the 34% is for this space on the right. The percentages are used instead of pixels to help the content adapt to different screen sizes. And we have 209 pixels for the bottom padding here. And 117 pixels for the padding on the left. Now we can save changes. I haven't actually made changes to the paddings because I want my own content to fit the existing layout, but if you, for whatever reason, want to change them, now you know how to do it on your own. Update. I want to check if my new background image will display correctly on the front. And yes, looking good. The section below is built using the same principles. Everything is the same, only the arrangement is mirrored. So for this section, you put the section title in the left column or first elements holder item. In the second one, you put this video button instead of an image. So I want to go and change the demo images with my own first. Remove. Just a sec. There. And set. Now I can update the page. Let's check the front. And there it is. Now I can go on to replace the image that serves as the background for our video button. Okay, upload files, give me a moment. And set. Now save changes and update. All this going back and forth might seem like a lot of unnecessary work, but believe me, you don't want to skip checks for several steps and then find out that your page has gone out of whack. All right, now we can take a closer look at the setup for the video button. The settings we have for it include the option to add a link to your video. It can be from YouTube or Vimeo, wherever it's hosted. The image field is left blank because we set the background image at the level of the elements holder right. But we can use the options here to change the button color. The current one is black. 
then button size or its width and height in pixels, or we can set a custom image instead. Moving on, the next section is a simple product list. As opposed to the carousel list we worked on earlier, there is no movement here. In the back, that's built using the product list simple element. The general principle is the same that we saw for the carousel type product list. Basically, you still need to have singles in order for your list to display. And fortunately for us, we already do. Then we pick settings like the column number and number of products that will be shown. Then the space, same selection as before, order by date, and order descending, also familiar. Then the taxonomy values has the one category picked. Display title, that will show up here on the simple list. And you can change the title tag, text transform, the excerpt, that's this. It's limited to 30 characters, but you can change that easily. Display prices is set to yes, so users will be able to see it while browsing the list. That's it. What I'd like to draw your attention to now is this, the background image we have here. It's added in row settings, so it backs any elements you may choose to add. Open the settings, and under Design Options you'll see the image. I'll replace mine now. Let me find the one I prepared. There. Set image. And save. Then update. When it's done processing, we can check the front. Ok, there's my new image. Underneath this section, we have a row with several icon with text elements. While the element itself is familiar, the way it's added to the row is a bit novel. Each element is put in a different column. The columns themselves are custom, as we can see noted here. If we peek at the options, we can see that they are the same ones we had for the previous icon with text elements, so you already know how to customize them. So, moving on, we have a section with the blog list. Now, before we can get into its settings, I'm going to change this background image. Just as we saw in the previous section, this image is added across the row using row settings. Now I'll remove the old and replace it with the new. There. OK. Save changes. And update. And when we refresh, we have a new background for our blog list and we can check its options and settings. The blog list, like any other list we've had so far, depends on having singles. Now, blogging is one of the core WordPress features, so you will access blog options by going to Posts instead of somewhere theme-specific. All your singles will be under All Posts. We can see quite a few are included in the theme demo, so let's narrow down the category that we have on the list. When you open the blog list settings, there, category lipstick. So now we can look for singles that belong to that specific category and edit only them. We have some here at the bottom. We have four here and four here, so these are just the singles we need. So let's open one up. Well, it's a bit hard to recognize from this angle, so let's click the link and open the post. OK, this is it. We have a title image, the featured image, and the post content, which is text. We have some tags, and social network links, which are enabled by theme default, so you won't have to worry about inserting them. Then we have this navigation feature with images that helps visitors skip from one post to the next. Now, when we want to make changes in the back, I think you'll agree that this chunk of text, shortcodes and HTML tags is hard to parse. So, to make things easier on ourselves, we're going to allow post editing in WP Bakery. That's done by opening its options and going to Role Manager. Now, under Post Types, you can edit with WP Bakery Page Builder. Just set Custom and this will open several possibilities for us to click. So, I'm going to tick Post so I can edit them and Pages using the WP Bakery. Then save. And once the row settings are successfully updated, we can return to our blog single. Refresh the page so that the option to enable WP Bakery appears. Yay, there it is. This looks much better, doesn't it? Let's see what options we have in the text block settings. Ok, we have the text that's added simply as plain text. 
but this indented paragraph. When we select it, we can see that the block quote is turned on. This lets us create quote-like appearance on the front for this bit of text. Generally, text is easily replaced, you just need to paste or type in your content. As for other things we can change on our single, we have the post format options. Our current post is standard. That means its layout includes the featured image at the top and, above the title, the date, category and post author are listed. In our case, that's admin because of our role. And the title here is the name we gave to our post. Then below that, we can pick the categories or add tags. Everything's pretty much the same as we had for other types of singles before. Likewise, this is where you'd set your featured image. Now, please note that although it looks like the blog list image, their aspect ratios are different. Our featured image is displayed in a landscape orientation. Its width is greater than its height. But our blog list, the image here is in portrait orientation. We can see that it's higher than it is wide. Now, this is achieved simply by uploading an image with suitable dimensions. So, I'm going to set a new image that will show in the blog list. I prepared one that fits the criteria. OK, set. And now let's replace the featured image too. Upload. And there. Good, set. Now I can update the page and see if the front looks good. Refresh. And yes, there's my new featured image. Now let's see the list. Refresh the home page. OK, that's there too. Now I'm going to replace all the other featured and blog list images to customize the appearance of my blog list. Actually, I can thin out these tabs first. And in fact, I can skip ahead for this next part. OK, I'm done sorting out my blog singles. And I can refresh the page to check if everything is where it should be. And yes, this is it. We can move on to the next section of the home page, which is a contact form for newsletter subscriptions, which has, hmm, run away from me. The section above is normal, so this is a localized issue. And I'll show you how to fix it now. Ah, close this. Scroll. OK, here we are. The pop-up we need for our home page is the subscribe pop-up. So I'm selecting that one. Save, then update. And now when we refresh the page, there it is, our newsletter subscription form. Users just type in their email, click send, and that's it. Now, this text on the left, subscribe, it's set as background text over a background image. I'll show you where the settings are and replace the image. In row settings, design options, click to remove the image, and let me upload a new one. Open, OK, and set. Let's check. Refresh. OK, it's there. Now for the text. You can change that in the inner row settings under Mikado settings. And when you scroll down, you have this background text field which you can use to change the text. This one here. OK, let me close up the settings so we can move on to the next section, which is the Instagram list. On the front, it looks like this. If you recall at the beginning of the video, when we imported the demo content and checked the page, the Instagram feed wasn't showing. Then we went to the social network settings under Biagiotti options and fixed this. Now that it's connected, let's take a look at the Instagram list settings. The first thing we can do is pick the type of list, gallery or carousel. The number of columns shown, you can change this. Then if you want to have spacing between items, number of visible images, and the cache time. This is the amount of time in seconds that once elapsed will trigger your Instagram feed to refresh and upload all the pictures you've published in the given period. So, for the duration of the time you set, your site's Instagram images will stay the same. Then, when it's over, the site will load and display the new images on the profile. If you want this section to update dynamically, then simply set a zero here. And new images will show up as you post them. 
Then we have the image size option. Instead of medium, you can change them to small or large. And the Instagram info, that's this box with text here. And in the options below, we have the tagline, title, and subtitle with the actual info content. Instagram is the tagline, and then we have the title, and at the bottom, the subtitle. And in the second tab, slider settings, are the options you'd use if you chose carousel for your Instagram list type. They don't apply to me now, so I'm going to exit. And we've actually reached the end of our page content and have come to the footer. The footer, much like header, is built using the general theme options. So that's Biagiotti options and then the settings for footer. Now, this first option, footer and grid, is enabled. And we can see on the front that our content is limited in display to fit within the grid instead of being screen wide. The uncovering footer option. I'll set it to yes so you can see the effect. It's intended to make the footer appear slowly as users scroll towards it. So let's see how it appears when we try it out. As we scroll, the footer seems to slide out from under the last page section. And the Instagram feed seems to go up as the footer goes down. But since I'm about to start working on the footer, it's going to be easier to do checks with the uncovering footer disabled. Let me refresh. Okay. The next option is Show Footer Top. It's set to Yes because the footer top is, let me show you, this whole bit here. Our footer top is set to show three columns. You can change that, of course. This alternate three. This is a useful option if you have, say, an Instagram feed in your footer and need the space to show it properly. This option will let you have three columns where the third one will be as large as the other two combined. So instead of this even column division, you'll have two narrower ones and a wider one. And we have the footer bottom enabled to show, with just one column there and compact spacing. It's... Mm, I can... Actually, I won't turn it off because here, we can't see its content right now, so this is what the page without anything in the footer bottom looks like. But since it's enabled and not showing, this means I have to make some adjustments. The actual footer content is not edited here. That's done by going to Appearance and picking the Widgets option. And here are the widgets and widget areas. We're going to start with the footer top. There's one area for each column. So, column 1 has a separator widget. It's giving us this space here so this content can line up with the rest. It has 130 pixels set, and below it we have the text widget. The title here is contact, and it's here, and the information underneath is added using the text box. If you switch to the text tab, you can see the content with the HTML markup, so you can work from here if you prefer. We have one more thing here that's easier to see from the visual tab, that's this image here. And this is a single image that's added using the Add Media button at the top. Okay, moving on to column 2. Here we have another separator widget. Nothing new to note. Then we have a text widget that's actually used to add a logo image. I'm going to replace that quickly. Just a moment. Add new. Okay. There it is. Now, just as I did before, I'll copy the URL and, oops, paste it over the old URL. Save. Now I'll check the front. And, okay, there it is. I can thin the tabs out now. And move on to the custom font widget. It's used to add this title text, an oasis of beauty, which is here. If you want to customize it, you can change the title tag to any of the others in the drop-down. Or switch the font family, font size, line height, text decoration, color. You can replace that too. And text align is center, so this is how it looks on the front. And that's all the common settings, but if you want, you can make adjustments in the fields below. Those are things like font size settings for different screen sizes. Next, we have another separator, but then we have the social icons group widget. 
is the same one we saw when we were going through the side area settings. Since the options are identical, I won't bore you by going through them. So let's proceed to column 3. It has a, a separator widget, and more interesting, a text widget. It holds this text with links. It might be easier to make changes from the text editing mode. You can work separately on the anchor text and the link. Just select and replace. Same with the link text. And just avoid the HTML tags to keep the style unaffected. But if you're experienced enough, you can change the styling too if you like. And that's it for the footer top. Now for our disappearing footer bottom. It should be here, but we can't see it because we first need to select the content for this widget area. In this case, it's a menu. So find footer bottom column 1. If you recall, our general settings included only one column for footer bottom. And here we have the navigation menu widget. And we need to select the menu in order for it to show up on the front. The name is very indicative, footer menu bottom. So when you set it, just save and we can see how the front looks. Refresh. And there it is, our footer bottom with its content. The menu used here is made the same as any other menu, meaning under appearance, menus. And we can see here it's open for editing. Now, each of these menu items are set as a custom link. You can edit the navigation label to whatever you want it to say and add a URL for the appropriate page. There you have it. A pretty easy fix for the footer bottom, don't you think? That's it. Let's look back at what we've done today. You now know how to work with all these elements, settings and widgets. And you're a step closer to your new beauty and cosmetics shop. You can use this video as a refresher if you need it at any point in the future. And I'll leave some useful links in the description section for the video. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please drop us a line in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about new theme guides and tutorials.